has plenty of time, runs up out of the pocket. Up the middle, taken off his feet at the six. Marquise Bell has been very busy. Welcome in Cowboys Nation to this week's episode of First and Ten presented by J.C. Penney. I'm your host Nicole Hutchison alongside second year safety, the one and only Marquise Bell. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Now you've got, you guys had your bye week. I mean, how refreshing does it feel to, you know, kind of go into this week regrouped and refocused? Uh, I feel like everybody's well rested, you know, ready to get back after it. The bye week was definitely needed. So got us a little time to, you know, unwind, uh, get back with our families, just do the uh, things that, that matter. Yeah. You know, now we're back into it. And it certainly feels good to be four and two rather than three and three heading into yeah, this week, right? <laughs> I want to kind of go back and backtrack towards your story, right? It's kind of unique. Um, you went to Maryland, then you went to JUCO and found yourself at FAMU HBCU game. <laughs> Shout out to HBCUs. Uh, but how would you describe your journey? A long one. Yeah, yeah it was long. Uh, so after leaving Maryland, I didn't really know what I was finna do. Then you know, end up going JUCO. Wasn't trying to do that, mm -hmm. but you know, it was it was a it was an eye opener for me. You know, the real world is you know it was here. Yeah. So I had to tighten up. Uh, fortunately, I got the uh, chance to go play at FAM. Tremendous school. Love my HBCU. <laughs> you know, the Rattlers out there go Rattlers, but they gave me a shot, yeah. and I had to make the most of it. Yeah, uh, a lot of guys came out of FAMU. I mean, you've got. Uh, Bob Hayes, Nate Newton, um, Hall of Famers right there. And yeah, you're... I talk to Nate all the time. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> have you guys felt, I guess, built that relationship since you are in the same building? Yeah, since I've been. I, I talk to Nate anytime I see him. Awesome. Uh, I was actually, when I first got here, I was on a show. They had brought me in there to do a show. Yeah. yeah, I love the guy, man. He's a great dude. A lot of people don't realize, I mean, how much HBCUs really kind of make you who you are. Uh, how much has FAMU played a part in, you know, your role and your success, really? Uh, uh, helped me out a lot. Helped me grow as a man, as a football player. Uh, you also get overlooked a little bit, so it gives you that that chip on your shoulder to actually go do the extra work that everybody else ain't willing to do. And they always gonna be behind you. The Rattlers always behind me. Anytime I look <laughs> on my Instagram, Twitter, yeah. always got somebody from you know Rattler alum just saying like. We're rooting for you, yeah. know it's important. And I went to Howard, so trust me, I know, <laughs> I, I know how it feels, uh, but you're a part of, you know, a rich legacy of guys who played in the NFL, successful guys like Nate and, you know, Bob. Just what does that mean for you to be a part of that legacy? Got some big shoes to fill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coming behind those guys, those great legends, you know, just, you got to uphold the standard that they set before you. So, you know, like I said, just big shoes to fill. I think I saw where uh, you had a video go out before you um, went into the draft last year and you said that your grandmother was someone that, you know, really played a role in, you know, your motivation. Why is that? She's my everything. Mm -hmm. She did everything for me. She sacrificed a lot for me. She was always the anytime, you know, when I was left school, a lot of people turned their back on me, but she was always there supporting me, telling me like, you got to get back out there. You got to continue and just strive for what you want. And, Without her, I don't, I don't know where I would be right now, so I'm forever grateful for that. I think I, I listened to a quote you said, you're playing for something bigger, right? Um, and of course, that's your grandmother. How good does it feel to kind of give her the life that she wants and you know that she deserves? It, it feels good right now, but it'll feel a lot better when I get to buy that house. Yeah. Get to walk it through those doors and be like, Grandma, this your house. <laughs> like that, I don't know how I feel then. Cowboys blitz. He's running the ball and he is knocked off his feet by Bell. Yep, it is by Marquise Bell into the backfield. Now talking about your season with the Dallas Cowboys. Last year, of course, didn't play too much. This year you're playing um, and already through six games, you're one of the top four tacklers. Did you expect yourself to come in and make an impact so quickly? Or is that something like, hey, I was ready for this? Uh, I wouldn't say I was, I wasn't ready, but I wouldn't say I was, you know, it was, a new position change, so you know it's a lot of a lot of learning. But you know when you got the great support that we have, coaches, players, everybody help you out. It's kind of easy, you know, to be successful. Yeah, the transition seems to be seamless for you. But you played a little bit. I know, uh, fam, you had a couple of packages with you inside the box. How much did that help you as far as this transition? Uh, it, it helped a lot. But also last year I played a little bit of the uh, linebacker as well in different packages. So you know they were they were molding me for it. I feel like, but. <laughs> I love that I could be able to go out there and help the team any way that I can. Snap back, 
has time now. He runs up out of the pocket. Now he's chased. There's a flag. And he's going to be sacked back at around the 43-yard line. We had a coming out party in week six. <laughs> Seven tackles, a pass deflection, a key goal line stop. Just how good did that game feel for you after uh, you had that big game? Uh, it felt great just to go out there after, you know, the big loss. Just to, you know, get us back on the right track before we go on that break. Uh, it, it was amazing. Now we're heading into week eight. You guys have the LA Rams. They come into AT&T Stadium and that team has a lot of weapons. Uh, what challenge do those guys like Cooper Cup, uh, Nakua, what, what challenge do those guys bring to you guys? Same challenge every team has. You know, everybody has great athletes. Everybody has playmakers on both sides of the ball. You know, it's a National Football League. So, you know, I think it's less of what they can do and what we need to do. We need to just lock in on, you know, our jobs, our responsibilities, our preparation and everything to handle itself on Sunday. This team pretty much goes as this defense goes. It, has that been a challenge every week, having to know that, hey, this unit has got to step up every day, every game pretty much? Nah, it's, uh, I, I feel like we complement each other. Offense, we have a tremendous offense, yeah. great players on both sides. So mm -hmm. I feel like if, if we're lacking anywhere, yeah. either side is going to pick the other side up. All right. Now at this point of the season, you guys have a couple of games that are, this stretch is going to be really difficult. Uh, what message does this defense want to send to those teams? More so not to those teams, to ourselves. We just got to keep moving forward. With every game, you know, we always got to just there's going to be mistakes made. You just got to keep pushing forward, keep striving for what we want at the end of the year, which is that, that trophy. Okay, well, now we're going to go through the fun questions. It's called the final drive. I'm just going to run through some questions. Just mm -hmm. Give me some quick answers. That'd be great. Um, all right, I'm going to start with this. What are you, what are you most fear? Biggest fear? Uh, planes. All right, favorite food? I hate food. flying. You hate flying? Yeah. We ain't going to get into that. Oh, favorite food? Um, I love pasta. Pasta, what kind of pasta? Any type. All right, if your family had to choose one word to describe you as, what would they say? I'm quiet. Quiet? Yeah. Okay, you don't give me quiet vibes, but it's all right. What career path would you have taken if not a pro athlete? <laughs> Lord, I think about that question every day. Mm. Oh, I, don't, I have no idea. What career do you see yourself? I, mean, not I wanted now, to be a broadcaster. I wanted to be, really? but then, I don't really like talking in front of people, but like the more I do it, the more comfortable I am with it. Yeah. So I, I, I wouldn't mind doing that. Favorite memory at FAMU? I feel like I know Southern what you're game. Say. Oh, okay, nah. okay, okay. Southern game, my first year at FAM. Okay. Night game, Pack Stadium. Yeah. I caught two picks. Okay. Shout out to you. <laughs> what Madden rating would you give yourself? <laughs> Lord. Madden got me a zero right now, linebacker. But we ain't gonna talk about that, Madden. We go, we, we gonna talk about it. We gonna <laughs> but, let them slide right now. Yeah, I'd say a good little 90. 90. I wouldn't, I'm not gonna go too high, but I ain't gonna, you know, low ball it. 90s, I feel 90 cool. Right. Who on the team are you closest with? Defense. I feel like the defense itself is like just a close-knit group. Like we all, we all hang out together. We all, you know, have our special little outings. Yeah. You know, different groups are closer, but like I feel like the defense as a whole yeah. is a special bond there. Do you have a hidden talent? Uh, <laughs> I would say I can sing, but you know, people don't really think I can. Really? Okay. <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing. Oh. I can't sing to save my life. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate it, and I know all of Cowboys Nation enjoy getting to know you for these past 10 minutes. But that'll do it for First in 10 presented by JCPenney. We'll see you next week.